One more time. Okay, I think now to the training questions from the from the audience. Sure. Maybe the outline what is training looks like Monday to Sunday. Like what are the key points in a training week? He wants to uh, talk about the monthly uh, training, then he'll talk about the weekly. Uh, and during a month, there's two weeks where, where they have to max out. So uh, basically, in order for these two weeks to work fine... Are these con consecutive weeks or is it like... How much time or what? No, not the second Yeah, uh, that's the second week and the last week. Of the month. Okay. okay. So basically, uh, if we talk about uh, the month, uh, the first week is around 70%. The second week could go up to uh, 85%, 90%. Third week, uh, you go back to 70 or even lower. Uh, fourth week, you go uh, up to 95 and 100. Yeah, the same goes with the monthly training. If, if it's uh, a four-month four uh, span, it goes uh, little to medium uh, training for the first month, then uh, you go up the second, then you go down, and then you go up again for the fourth month. Uh, when we talk about the weekly training, it's the same, the, almost the same format. You got uh, seven days, two of which is off, so uh, you want to max out twice a week. Uh, so basically you want to make sure that the first day is relatively uh, heavy. Uh, relatively light, then the second goes heavy, then you go light, and then you go up heavy again. So uh, the same format for for uh, for a monthly span or a weekly span. He also would like to add about um, uh, playing around with uh, training uh, format. Like uh, again, we give you general rules of thumb and you just make music so you got uh, strength training you got endurance and you got technique uh, you could have technique training in the beginning of the week or at the end when you're tired like you would like to check out how good are you going to perform on the end of the week in terms of technique um, maybe he could add strength in the end mm -hmm. to see like you're very tired let's let's push it Let's push it to the limit, you see? Uh, he's saying that uh, the challenge, the number one challenge in weightlifting is to break a routine, not to keep it routine, not to, not to uh, have the athlete bored yeah. from training. You have to keep it challenging. You have to keep it uh, interesting all the time. You have to change it up. You have to ha have the athlete challenge himself during training. So uh, there's no such thing as a program that once I write it for you, that's that's your program for life. No, they change all the time. Very popular question. Um, what's your favorite and least favorite exercise? As in a classical exercise, like snatch, clean, jerk, which one does he like best? Um, I do not allow myself to like something more than the other. No. You know, because again, uh, the goal the initial goal and the final goal is to have a grand total, a big total. So uh, if I like the snatch, for example, more than the clean, uh, I could keep focus on it and then lose my clean. Or the uh, exact po uh, opposite. Yeah. If I keep cleaning, I'll lose my snatch. So what I have to do is balance them both and uh, work on the goal, which is a grand total. For the non-classical lifts? Uh, something he likes, maybe he likes from the blocks. Or. Okay. For the non-traditional or classical movements, he likes, he loves to uh, jerk off the blocks okay. without cleaning it a lot. Like he would like to uh, take it off the blocks and jerk it overhead. Uh, he also likes to, um, he likes to, to challenge himself. In the training, like for example, if he can't, uh, like if he can't put up certain numbers, he'll keep going like the two hours, complete two hours until he gets it. Wow. Yeah, like <laughs> he, he just likes to do that. And least favorite? Does he have like something that? He likes it when someone says that he he won't be able to do it because that that's when he actually does it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do it. 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 I'm not sure how
Uh, uh, he likes to avoid uh, maxing out when he's fatigued because um, he that's when you're uh, the least uh, concentrated. That's when you're uh, prone to injuries and it's a huge risk. So he likes to avoid maxing out when he's fatigued. Okay. But he has no like, least favorite exercise. Uh-huh. I love the exercises that I have been and no, because anything hard he likes to do. It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't like it when someone uh, considers that exercise or this exercise hard on him. When the coach sees that it's hard on him and he's like, uh, "Okay, you can stop," he just keeps going. Get the maximum out of everything. Talking about warm up, um, yeah, I saw warm up. I filmed some warm up, and it's usually. Like a circle, somebody of the team like is chosen, I guess, and does the warm-up. And then it's just a question, um, any other specific things he focuses on in his warm-up? Like, is there some area like he takes extra caution with or just general warm-up? He likes to take extra care about his shoulders mm -hmm. because uh, even when you go way back to his uh, wrestling days, he had issues with his uh, with his shoulders. Um, they weren't flexible enough. They weren't mobile enough, uh, and that affected his weight lifting. Like there was a time where he could clean a weight ten times in a row, but he couldn't jerk it. So he took extra care of his shoulders, and until today, he likes to pay close attention to it during the warm up. How much time um, does stretching take in his routine? How important is it for him? And then someone asks, uh, how does he mentally focus before a heavy snatch? This should probably be a Yeah, break it into two. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, the most important thing in weightlifting is uh, being flexible and being mobile. So, uh, in order to achieve big numbers, you have to always be flexible and mobile. So, uh, basically, um, to know how much time exactly do you need for stretching, uh, is imagine that your body is like metal. In order to, um, to for a blacksmith to create something out of metal, he has to warm it up very, very, very hot. Like he puts it in, in, in fire, then he does whatever he wants out of it. So that, that goes exactly the same for your body. You uh, warm up well, and then you do whatever you want with your body. Once it's warm, you can you can achieve whatever you want. So if it's 10 minutes before training, uh, it goes the double uh, after training. Like if it's 10 minutes, so it's 20 minutes after training. And that's the average. Okay. How does he mentally focus before a heavy snatch or jerk? He likes to use a technique uh, of visualization. He visualizes like he visualizes that he already snatched that heavy snatch or cleaned that heavy clean um, prior to competition a thousand times. Mm -hmm. He visualizes it during practice. If it's a light snatch that he's going to do, he visualizes that it's that heavy snatch during the match, during the game day, during Houston, during the Olympics, during whatever competition. So it's a thing of visualization. like. The more you visualize and the more you get into the, uh, the atmosphere where you imagine yourself lifting that or that number, basically you don't have to think about it any longer during the lift itself. Uh, it's kind of like a car, a vehicle. Um, the manufacturer already plans for it to, uh, to be as fast as 100 kilometers per hour or 200 or 300 but the driver does not know it so the driver keeps driving slow or as fast as he thinks he could go but you have to understand that you have the capability or the car that can actually go a lot faster so once you realize that you'll be able to visualize and then you'll be able to execute then we have a question, what mental cues does he use for himself when performing the lifts? Basically, uh, basically uh, about uh, mental cues, he uh, doesn't, doesn't use any. And uh, if anybody tells you that they use uh, mental cues, they're probably not... Very good. Not very good, but they're probably not telling you the truth. No. Because you start, you use mental cues till like 60% of your weight. Mm -hmm. Then comes in your 
special talent, mm. your thing, like your trademark move, your trademark high pull, your trademark uh, 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 contact with the bar, uh, hip hip uh, hip extension, hip uh, hip thrust. It's all about you. So there's no mental cues. You just do the lift. You can't answer a question in a test if you didn't study. Even if, if you talk to the coaches, they never talk about technique during competition. Their, their job at, at the competition is to pump you up, to motivate you. But they never talk about technique because technique and tweaking technique and, and using all these kind of mental cues to better your technique mm -hmm. belongs in practice, in training. Yeah. During game day, it's you. Yeah, what are his thoughts on flinging his head backwards versus trying to stay on the horizon when doing his pull? Uh, no. What he's saying is there's no rule about throwing your head back or keeping it on the horizon. Uh, and there's no secret formula to winning a medal with whether keeping your head forward or throwing it back. It's just a question of God's creation. God created you uh, extra flexible or with less flexibility. So it all depends on um, on your built, how you're built. So like if you look at the Chinese, for example, not all of them are the same. Uh, you have people that throw their head back, people that keep it on the horizon, people that uh, move their feet when they're snatching, people that keep their feet dead on the ground when they're snatching and cleaning. So uh, if you look at Lu Xiaojun, uh, he has one technique. If you look at Liao Hui, he has another technique. So we're all different. It's, uh, it's not a question of uh, throwing your head backwards or sideways. It's a question of doing your work. How does his coach program squats for strength when he needs it? Then the follow-up is how many times a week does he back or front squat and how heavy, how many sets reps does he okay. So first part, how does his coach determine squats for strength when he needs it? There is no secret way to uh, program squats or strength training. It's, it's a question of uh, having PR numbers. And those numbers are strictly for the coach, not even for the player. Because the coach uses these numbers to determine the progress of what he already did. Like uh, if next week we have a PR squad, that's because we want to do we want to we want to determine how strong we got during our work this week so it's to determine how well you have worked and uh, basically not all PRs are PRs like for example if i did a 95% of my PR but i was super tired so that is a PR because if i wasn't tired i would have doubled that number so uh, basically about PRs uh, the coach has four very important concepts that he works on uh, it's strength and strength with um, with purpose like for example you could be very strong you could have very strong legs but you can't clean so what's the purpose there you have to have strength with purpose uh, the second point is that you have to um, you have to be very uh, very cautious about technique because one little tweak can change the whole lift the third uh, point is self-motivation and also uh, the player's state of mind like the athlete has to have a clear state of mind and he always have to keep his confidence and that's up to the coach because if you didn't have a great day you might lose your confidence so it's the coach's job to get you back on top and the the most important point is uh, believing in yourself That, that, that you can actually lift that lift or that you can exactly uh, he ha you always have to believe because uh, the the body gets its uh, gets its order from the brain so if the brain doesn't believe then the body won't do it so you always have to believe so the three points that we talked about the most important point is believing And that's also up to the coach. And um, is there like a set number of like uh, sets or reps or how many times a week he does front versus back squat? 
Uh, again, um, it's not about how many sets or how many reps you do because, again, the most important part of a, of a, of a squad development exercise is to develop greater technique and greater strength and uh, to, to have better numbers. So you can basically squ squat all you want. You can squat back, back squats, front squats, max it out every day. But then you'll find yourself with bad knees, bad joints. So what's 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 uh, good about that? Mm. You have to make sure that the squats serve the athlete. Yeah. That um, because again, an athlete like myself or uh, any other athlete who who is aiming for uh, Olympic gold or world uh, world records, it's not a question of one year training. It's a question of a lot of years like this year I could be great next year if I'm not careful enough I could be staying at home so uh, like any programming for squats I have to make sure that it's safe and that it's serving my technique people saw a video where you did these dead front squats or back squats okay. or quarter squats okay or do these have a purpose in an amateur way of this training Okay. Oh. Basically, this exercise is an isometric exercise, and uh, its purpose is uh, to strengthen the uh, the muscle and to keep it um, to keep it in tone and to have endurance. Like, for example, uh, when you do dead point squats or uh, any any type of exercise with a pause in it, it um, It transforms the muscle. It uh, it allows it to develop in ways that you can't imagine, and uh, it it actually serves the purpose that the muscle becomes so strong that it it, it could work without uh, without the need of a lot of oxygen to pass through it. Mm -hmm. So it serves a big purpose for amateurs and professionals. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of athletes lose medals because of that, like. Their muscles are not used to that kind of uh, to that kind of pause on that kind of position. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're cleaning a new number or a new record, and they just can't do it because the muscle is not in tone enough. Mm -hmm. So of course, it's very important. Then, what's the most underdeveloped aspect, be it mental or physical, of an elite weightlifter, and how would he advise an amateur lifter and or coaches to improve? This aspect. What he thinks is uh, like uh, that that is underdeveloped in uh, in uh, weightlifters um, is the 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 negative contraction of a muscle. Like for example, um, um, what what you can do to develop that aspect is is to always do work with pause mm -hmm. or to like. Uh, Yeah, in the negative return, like like when you when you do a high pull, you don't just drop the weight; you just go slowly downwards okay. to develop the 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 opposite muscle of the muscle that is working. Yeah. So again, negative contraction that that's the most like the 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 thing that is really underdeveloped in in lifters. Uh, that's what he thinks. So. Uh, Basically, the the coach can never pro coaches never program that it's yeah. it's never on paper. Yeah, it's never on paper. They cannot calculate it. But if an athlete works on it, he'll find that uh, if if a muscle that is working on a certain lift, the opposite muscle is is if the opposite muscle is strong as well, so the lift gains overall strength. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, Uh, it's like a, it's a, it's a double strength. Somebody asked, or maybe we do the triceps question first. Sure. Um, how much direct tricep work does he do? People saw your big tricep. They want to know how does he handle. Yeah. Uh, there are people who are with triceps, ma sha Allah. So they ask him, "What do you do?" Basically, he's taken us back to his old story about uh, not being able to jerk. So that that attracted his attention to uh, to his elbow. His elbow always used to bend on on a lot of lifts. Mm -hmm. So in order to strengthen that point, he had to strengthen his tricep because the tricep is the lock of the door. Like when you open a door, it needs uh, it needs a lock to be unlocked. So the tricep 
is the lock. Once you extend, you lock it with the tricep. Yeah. You see, so basically, uh, he took uh, he, he pays a lot of attention to shoulders as well as well as uh, as triceps, and uh, that's that's also a thing that uh, that is very good in weightlifting. That uh, coaches also pay attention and cooperate with athletes about. Uh, a lot of exercises because some some exercises if we strengthen a muscle here let's say it might serve me but it won't serve you so if if it serves one athlete it doesn't automatically mean it will serve another athlete so basically what we do is we cooperate with the coach and we know each other's strength points and 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 weak points and uh, we uh, we translate we translate it into programming. Okay, so that was a good question. I didn't expect like yeah. this would be a very good question. Um, somebody asked, where does he get his energy from? Where does he get his energy from? Except from Basbusa. Yeah. Where is Basbusa? Where does he get his energy from? From Allah. Okay. What he does is he. Uh, he imagines his father being around and his family being around him because he's always traveling and uh, the people that inspire him, he imagines that they're with him in the room or in the arena where he's about to lift and they're motivating him and uh, it helps him a lot so he uses imagination and also uh, sometimes he, when he loses inspiration he goes back to old videos like uh, if he has like a, a video of a record lift, he just goes back, reanalyzes it, gets inspired off of it, and what he says about uh, finding energy, it's it's uh, it's very important, and it's it's like a battery that needs recharging all the time, and it as well as 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 it's very important to recharge it, you need to understand that it it gets uh, it gets empty a lot. It empties daily, mm -hmm. and you have to recharge it. So, um, it's it's very important just as training to stay motivated and to stay focused and to uh, to be on top. Very interesting. Very good. What's up with the crazy multiple empty bar combos? Okay. Does he have a name for it? Uh, this uh, this whole uh, story with the bar with the empty bars thing, it's actually it's scientific. It's not just. To show off, it's uh, very scientific. It's a method that uh, that I was that I was um, uh, uh, that I was educated on in the academy, and uh, it's it's actually it's very serious. It's uh, to develop uh, a, a stabilization system for the body, because there's all sorts of uh, stabilization uh, methods. There's horizontal. There's uh, a vertical. There's all sorts of stabilization. So. He likes to work on um, on using these bars and using these positions because, as we spoke before, when you when you do something and you pause, the the uh, the the like the 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 muscle uh, uh, the muscle uh, gains strength that it cannot gain from a heavy lift. Mm -hmm. When you pause, even for one minute, you can gain strength that you can never gain from uh, from a heavy lift. So this is work that I like to pay attention to, and uh, it's very important. Um, I, I, he doesn't have any names for them, but uh, what he can tell you is that when you use that amount of muscles, when you contract them all in one go, and you pause, and you keep holding, yeah. and you keep fighting, um, it takes out a lot of energy, and uh, I could get he could get cramps the next day. You know that's how hard it is. And it looks good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember him saying uh, when he did one, he said like in my mind, hundred more of this. Uh, even the coaches, they're very positive about it. Once they see an athlete doing something that is developing him, they uh, they don't mind. Plays into the next question about yeah creativity because he's always creative with exercise variations. Yeah, how does he come up with that? Does he like think about it? Does he just play around sometimes after the training? That takes us back uh, to uh, what he said at first. Uh, general rules of thumb. You, you get these rules and you just play with them. So. You make music. 
Yeah, so uh, like he, he, he's talking about the jerk, for example, um, you have basic rules of jerking, but in training you do variations, you could push press, you could push jerk, you could just keep the bar on your shoulders and just uh, move your feet, like the jer uh, split jerk. Yeah, you could, you could split jerk, you could squat jerk. There's all sorts of of of, uh, of of tools and rules that you can work with. You could you could work two rules at the same time. You could work three three different rules, or you could work with five, or you could work with one. So it's uh, that's that's the main objective to break the routine and to use all the instruments that are given to you by weightlifting to translate them into uh, good lifts, heavy lifts. We haven't touched on the nutrition part. Nutrition, if you like. It's not training, but I think to, to, to wrap it up. Basically, there's no secret to nutrition. It's, uh, it's basically, uh, you do a study. You study what kind of training do you have. If it's, uh, if it's uh, endurance training, like it's going to be a long training session, then you obviously need a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugars. Uh, if you're doing uh, speed training, you just take uh, a little of everything, little carb, little, little sugar. And the most important part is the protein. The protein is um, basically the, um, the, the foundation of our game. And, 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 and it rebuilds uh, mu muscle. It helps to, to regenerate lost tissue. And uh, basically, uh, basically, vitamins are very important as well. Then also recovery, sleep, important topic. How many hours per day does he sleep? Um, do he, does he use sleep aids of some kind? There's the, always the stable amount of hours that you need, which is eight. You need to sleep eight hours. But there's also hours that you need in order to relax, total rest, even if you're not going to sleep. Like uh, in in uh, in the national team, we have uh, training twice daily. So uh, obviously, between both training sessions, there's uh, an hour or two just for rest, total rest. Uh, when it comes to days off, um, it doesn't have to be total rest as in sleeping, but it has to be total rest uh, outside the world of weightlifting. Like you need to get your mind off of weightlifting. Don't even watch videos of weightlifting in order for the brain to reboot. Not only the, the, the body, the brain needs to reboot because everything has a battery and the battery needs to get recharged. Yeah. So basically, yeah, that's it. And does he use sleep, sleeping aids? Um, no, he doesn't use sleep aids, uh, but what he recommends is to avoid caffeine because uh, caffeine is like, um, or at least to limit it, because caffeine uh, could, could get to a level uh, where you're just addicted and you can't train without a certain amount of caffeine in your body. So we do not want to get addicted because... That, that could translate onto bad numbers. So what you want to do is like, uh, even if you, you drink a little bit of caffeine, every now and then you need to cut it off. Okay, then we have favorite lifter. Does he have any? He, he answered the question in two answers. The first one was that he, uh, he likes a bit of everyone. He likes to look at the Tian Tao, 85. He likes to look at Lu. 77 but each player has like each athlete has uh positive sides and negative sides like for example both work a lot on their legs when they don't even need any more power on their legs so that's an example uh but if we talk about my personal favorite uh it has to be uh, Hussein Reza Zde um absolute world champion absolute Absolute athlete that uh, has achieved everything for his country, and uh, as 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 a person, he's he's just superb, and uh, I actually look up to him. And he he's met him, I think, right? He's he has met. Well, Abel Tahsin. Well, Abel Tahsin. Send me. Send Hussein Reza Zde. Ah, Abel Tahsin. Yeah, he did. Um, then one of the last ones was. 
Um, so my battery is at 2%. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Um, I think we, we covered, covered a lot. We covered most of the it. No, 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 no. Are you tired? I'm um, not. I could go for hours. <laughs> we I cannot sign. Some people ask uh, Nike, Adidas. Switching oh, the shoes, okay. Finas, I want to know why you are going to buy Adidas with Nike. Why did you buy Romaleo and buy Adidas? The transition happened when he transitioned from 69 to 77. Uh, when he uh, became heavier, he could go up to 79 kilos during training. So he became a lot heavier. So most of his weight goes forward. So it became a lot harder to control himself with the Romaleos because, because of the heel. So uh, he had to, ten, to to find a shoe that will make him comfortable. Uh, has and, and its heel is not very low and not very high. And in the same time, uh, the 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 Nikes are very uh, very heavy. Mm -hmm. So the Adidas uh, are are a bit lighter, a lot lighter actually. There's a 800 gram difference. 800 gram? Yeah. It's older, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, the, the Adidas are one kilo. The, the Romaleos are, like are one six hundred or one eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then the biggest last question is, uh, what does he do for recovery after weighing in at competitions, like to, to recharge battery, maybe hard dieting? Okay. This is a question that you didn't ask, but I asked. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what, he, what I asked him was, um, uh, do you lose weight for competition? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I don't. He doesn't lose weight. So I asked him, you're 79 kilograms yeah. or 80. He's like, that's when you know where the weight is from. Because mm -hmm. if I know where the weight is from, I don't need to lose it. I just need to cut whatever it is that is that I'm doing, and I'll lose the weight. But other uh, athletes, they don't know where the weight is from, so they need to lose weight. They stop eating, they, so they need to recover. But he never needs to recover, because he's fine. Like, he gains the weight by drinking water, uh, adding extra protein, adding extra vitamins. So once he just cuts that, he's okay. back to normal, oh, you yeah, see? Yeah. But others, they don't know where the weight is from because they don't change, they, they're not new in the, in the category, you see? That's their normal body weight. Yeah. So when they get a bit fatter, they need to lose the weight. Yeah. He doesn't, yeah. you see? The thing was with him transitioning to the 77 kilogram was that uh, he did tests. He, he was investigated by doctors and uh, their investigation concluded that if he stays on the 69, he won't progress that much because uh, he's going to lose a lot of uh, red blood cells, a lot of oxygen, a lot of uh, glycogen. So he wouldn't perform as well. So if he transitions to the 77, he'll progress a lot faster and a lot better. So now when he, when he passes tests and they investigate again, once... Once he just loses this extra weight, he's to, he's down to 76 kilograms, and and he's fine. Uh, well, what he does uh, uh, to recover from uh, after weighing in at a competition is that he he actually prepares himself properly. He eats properly the day before. Mm -hmm. He eats properly for breakfast during uh, the day where he's going to weigh in. Mm -hmm. So there's not much to recover from. Yeah. Basically, what he has. Yeah, what he has is um, uh, like a hydration pack mm -hmm. and just a, a couple of simple sugars to get his energy back and uh, not not to not to lose energy and that's it. He doesn't recover as much. He doesn't recover much from uh, from weighing in. Yeah. This last last competition in Houston, um, the Koreans had their own cook and they had their own food food, and uh, the Chinese had their own uh, food as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, him, he only had his juice and a couple of yeah. couple of meals, nothing nothing more, you know, uh, because he believes that uh, the more food you have in your stomach, the more uh, the more blood flow will flow to the stomach, but. Uh, during game day, we need blood to flow to the brain in order to focus. So basically, if uh, 
if you have uh, more more uh, more blood in your uh, in your stomach and you're not focusing, yeah, exactly. you're just gonna bum out. Well, I guess that's it. That's all. That's it. That's it. Finish. Finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much okay. for taking the time. This was a long one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow.